our last speaker today is uh, Soa Jun Yu. Um, you can go ahead and share your slides. All right, from, from Case Western. Go ahead, um, uh, Soa Jun. Um, thanks for the introduction and thanks for inviting me to present my work. Um, I will talk about a homeostasis criteria for limit cycle systems, which is based on the infinitesimal shape response curves. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Professor Peter Thomas. And Dr. Wang just explained the infinitesimal shape response curve in her talk. And here we use it as a key tool for our homeostasis analysis. So first, what is homeostasis? Many problems in motor control involve holding a quantity to remain approximately constant despite variations of external conditions. Examples include like the stabilization of body temperature against changes in external temperature, as well as uh, the maintenance of metabolite concentration in the face of fluctuating metabolic demands. See a species of opossum is the body temperature versus environmental temperature. The body temperature uh, changes almost linearly when the external temperature is either small or large, while in between is a broad flat region where homeostasis occurs. Um, this general shape, uh, this general shape is called a chair, which I will uh, and I will mention mention it later. Um, so uh, in this and many other instances, uh, the homeostasis involves a dynamical system with the trajectories that converge to a stable equilibrium point. And one looks for an interval where the equilibrium value remains roughly constant as the external parameter changes during this interval. In contrast, many physiological systems maintain homeostasis through control of large amplitude limit cycles rather than fixed points. For example, in order to maintain the lung oxygen levels in the desired range around 100, the mammalian breathing central pattern generator produces ongoing large amplitude rhythmic activity that drives the biomechanics of the airways and lungs. Other examples include uh, like the swallowing of the Abdesia californica uh, in Dr. Wang's talk, the rate of intake of food is to be held at constant in spite of the resistance from the food. So for living cycle systems, uh, the quantity of interest uh, always change as uh, always change during the periods of the living cycle. And we assume the mean value of the quantity, which is averaged around the living cycle, is the one subject to control. So the main question is how the average of an arbitrary quantity in a limit cycle system responds to a sustained change in a parameter influencing the limit cycle dynamics. To study this question, we follow the concepts of infinitesimal homeostasis developed by Grubisky and Stewart related to fixed point systems. And then we apply the infinitesimal shape response curve introduced by Dr. Wang uh, to our limit cycle homeostasis analysis. Uh, let's first back to an n-dimensional fixed point dynamical system. The last variable xn is the controlled one. Suppose at some epsilon zero, the system converges to a fixed point x zero. As uh, epsilon varies around epsilon zero, the location of the fixed point may shift as the function of epsilon. While we want the controlled variable xn to remain approximately constant, Grubisky and Stewart formulates the notion of uh, infinitesimal homeostasis as the condition that the derivative of the controlled variable at the steady state solution with respect to the external parameter should vanish at some point, hence approximately constant near that point. The infinitesimal homeostasis points require zero first order derivative. If further, the second order derivative is non-zero, then this is a point of simple homeostasis. Chill points are defined to have uh, vanishing first order and second order derivatives and non-vanishing third order derivative, like the cubic function in the example of 
the body temperature versus environmental temperature. So higher order zero derivatives give more robust form of homeostasis. Such a mathematical reformulation of homeostasis allows uh, them to use the normal form theory to discuss the universal unfoldings of the uh, singularities associated with the homeostasis. The simple homeostasis points require no unfolding parameter, while trail points require one extra parameter. Such transformation of a homeostasis point to a normal form representation allows them to introduce the notion of a delta homeostasis, delta homeostasis region. That is the set of the external parameter lambda here, uh, such that the output value y here remains within like plus minus delta of the homeostasis value. Here lambda is the same as epsilon in our setting. This notion of the delta homeostasis region uh, allows uh, prov can provide a quantitative basis for comparing the robustness of different homeostasis mechanisms. Such a method was applied to study many biological systems, and all of those systems have a unique stable equilibrium for each value of the input. All right. Uh, so, however, the analysis above is premised on being able to calculate the derivative of the equilibrium value with respect to the perturbation parameter. So this becomes a problem when the physiological system has a large amplitude limit cycle. Therefore, an intuitive step, uh, intuitive step to study limit cycle homeostasis is to be able to calculate the change in the average of the quantity taken with respect to the limit cycle. So what do we need to calculate the change of an average? Here is, a, here is an example. This figure shows a family of limit cycles generated by the hodgkin huxley equations subject to a range of different driving currents. As the driving current increases from 10 to 150 PA, the period of the limit cycle decreases and its shape changes as well. Identifying fixed point homeostasis only requires tracking the change in a scalar component of the equilibrium. But studying homeostasis in a limit cycle system requires tracking changes in both shape and timing of the orbit. So to solve this problem, uh, we apply the infinitesimal shape response curve. But let's uh, first look at some notations. Uh, this is a general system which has a stable a limit cycle solution for each epsilon with finite period t sub epsilon. Um, the quantity of interest is denoted by, denoted by lowercase q, and the capital Q is the average of lowercase q evaluated around the limit cycle solution for one period. Then define a homeostasis criteria for uh, the capital Q in terms of its vanishing derivative with respect to the control parameter. Um, this is analogous to the formulation by Glubisky and Stewart for fixed point system. Then our goal is to provide a formula for analytically calculating the derivative of Q with respect to the control parameter so that we can using the formula to identify some uh, homeostasis points. To calculate the derivative, the basis for our analysis is infinitesimal shape response curve. Uh, I would like to uh, briefly remind you what it is. So it accounts for the linearized shape displacement of an oscillator upon a static perturbation, um, upon a static perturbation. So in the linear term here, gamma one is called the ISRC. Here, uh, tau sub epsilon is the perturbed time coordinate. Dr. Wang just showed that with the uniform time rescaling, the ISSC is a function of period T0 satisfying this non-homogeneous variational equation. Uh, here we generalize this simplified ISSC equation to arbitrary um, rescaled time coordinates, allowing tau sub epsilon to be more flexible. Um, so the local timing sensitivity new one here is no longer a constant, but depends on time T which is given by this expression uh, under some continuity assumptions. 
and it also should satisfy this condition to guarantee a T0 a solution of T0 periodicity. Uh, and T1 here is the linearized shift in the uh, period in response to the static perturbation. And it's given by this well known formula where Z represents the infinitesimal phase response curve. All right. Uh, so now the initial condition for this ODE of gamma one remains to be defined. Suppose the amperture periodic orbit X, the blue one and the perturbed orbit Y are cut by a po common point cross section S at P0 and P epsilon respectively. Then we can expand P epsilon around P0 to the first order. So P1 is the linear shape displacement from P0. The initial condition for the shape response curve is simply P1. Changing the point cross section transverse to the amperture flow will change the direction along which P epsilon is displaced relative to P0, leading to different uh, initial conditions and thus different shape response curves. But it can be shown that uh, arbitrary choices of the ISSC curves are related by a, a fixed, fixed offset, namely the flow evaluated along the uh, arm perturbing cycle multiplied by a constant, which is determined by their initial conditions. So, so far we see that the ISRC can uh, kind of complement the IPRC. The IPRC quantifies the effects of an instantaneous perturbation on the timing of the limb cycle, while the ISSC captures the effect of a sustained or parametric perturbation on the shape of the limb cycle. The ISSC family uh, of curves are related by a phase shift. Likewise, uh, the asymptotic phase functions of a limb cycle oscillator are also defined only up to an arbitrary phase shift. So these are like differences and similarities between the two response curves. All right, the ISSC is closely connected to our goal of calculating the uh, derivative of our average quantity. We begin by discretizing the uh, perturbed orbit and the unperturbed orbit, even though they have different periods. Qx is the uh, average of lowercase q evaluated around the trajectory of x, and similarly Qy. The difference between Qy and Qx is simply this one, and then we can approximate this term to the fourth order. Then we can use the shape response, the infinitesimal shape response curve to approximate this shape difference yk minus xk to the linear order epsilon times the uh, ISRC. Taking the limit, we get a continuous formula for the derivative calculation, which is determined by the gradient of the quantity and the ISSC. Note that the ISSC is a family of curves related by a phase shift. Will different ISSC curves give different derivatives? Actually, as you would hope, different ISSC curves should give the same result for the derivative since the sensitivity of a well-defined average should not depend on the coordinate system in which the sensitivity is mirrored. And in our paper, we give a proof that um, the phase shift associated with the ISSC cancels out when calculating uh, the derivative. This clarifies the insignificance of the ambiguity arising naturally in the definition of the ISRC. All right, to illustrate the theory about, we uh, considered two specific smooth systems using the simplified ISS equation. One is the Hodgkin Huxley model. Uh, in this application, I will mainly show some basic principles and calculations related to the ISSC. Set the driving current at 50 and apply a small static perturbation to it. Uh, first, define two different point cross sections. S1 is the one with voltage equal to zero and increasing. Uh, see this M versus V plane. The green curve represents the S1 section. It intersects the unperturbed in cycle at P0 and intersects the perturbed cycle at P epsilon one. Then the linear shape displacement 
uh, between the two points, which is which is also the initial condition for an SS, ISRC is given by this limit. Then you find another uh, perpendicular section transverse to the uh, unperturbing cycle at the same point P0, but transverse to the perturbed cycle at another point P epsilon 2. Uh, that is this magenta line. A second initial condition for an SRC is given by this limit. With the different initial conditions, the solutions for the ISSC equation are different. This figure shows the four components of two ISSC solutions, illustrating how the shape changes in response to a small perturbation. Uh, the top is in the uh, direction of the voltage variable, the bottom in the direction of the three gating variables. The significant difference between two ISSC solutions results from the different concrete sections, but they are related by a phase shift. Black trees is the uh, difference between two ISSC solutions, E times minus PC, and the red trees is uh, the right-hand side, phi times F, with phi equal to this value. So you can see a great agreement with each other. Then to demonstrate the utility of the shape response curve for calculating the sensitivity of averages, we focus on three quantities, membrane potential, sodium current, and potassium current, as we uh, change the value of the injected current. The black star represents the empirical average curves for the three quantities. The red trees shows the slope at i equal to 50, analytically calculated by our derivative formula, which fits very well to these empirical curves. So this shows the accuracy of the derivative formula. In this figure, uh, eta is chosen to calculate the derivatives. If calculated by another uh, ISSC solution, C, the differences between the derivative results are very small. So confirming that the sensitivity is independent of the measurement way of shape response. Another example is a simple biomechanical chain. Here, uh, lambda is the input parameter, and uh, the X network is a feedforward excitation network. It's assumed mass action kinetics in the X components, except for the um, degradation of X3, which is uh, determined by the feedforward function eta here. Then X3 feeds into the Y network as its input. It's also assumed mass action kinetics in the Y network except for this reaction V1 to V2, which is controlled by this uh, feedback function zeta here. Um, and finally, Y4 is taken as the output variable. The, uh, actually, the Y4 output exhibits a small amplitude oscillations. Since the amplitude is very small, uh, so the output can still remain near a homeostatic plateau. So uh, the singularity was still used in the original paper by uh, Duncan and Glubisky. Uh, here we adopt their model, but apply our method to show the homeostasis for limit cycles in the sense of energy. The model has different dynamics under different parameter values of uh, A, B, and C. And I show two cases here. The top panels are the equilibrium value of Y4 as lambda varies from five to 15. For small lambda, the equilibrium are stable. Then a hop bifurcation occurs and the equilibrium becomes unstable and coexists with a stable limb cycle. The green curves uh, show the maximum and minimum values of the limb cycle oscillations. And you can see uh, the amplitude of the oscillations is very small. Then, uh, at the next, uh, uh, then at next hall bifurcation point, the oscillations terminate and the equilibrium regains stability. In this second case, uh, there are four hall bifurcation points. The middle panels show the average of Y4. In the stable equilibrium interval, the blue ones, it is simply uh, taken as the equilibrium value. 
in the limb cycle interval, the red ones is evaluated along the limb cycle solution. Um, the bottom panels show the lambda derivative of Y4 average. The solid trees, the blue and the red solid trees, represents the analytical uh, calculation given by our derivative formula. The dashed green trees is the direct numerical differentiation of the average curves from the middle panels. Again, um, the solid and the dashed trees uh, shows a uh, match very well with each other, demonstrating the accuracy of the derivative formula for calculating the uh, sensitivity of an average coordinate. Note that there are uh, some gray points which have zero first derivative and non-zero second derivative. Recall the mathematical formulation for homeostasis. These gray points indicate simple homeostatic averages for the limb cycles. All right, uh, to sum up, the main contribution of this work is to provide a formula for analytically calculating the first order derivative of an average quantity with respect to the input parameter. This is based on the infinitesimal ship response curve. Despite the ambiguity of the infinitesimal ship response curve, we show that the sensitivity of the average is invariant uh, with respect to which element of the ISS family is selected. So this opens up an ap approach to examine homeostasis behavior of uh, maintaining near constant average quantities around limb cycles. This first order uh, derivative formula helps us identify the infinitesimal homeostasis points as well as the simple homeostasis points uh, through uh, by plotting the derivative curve uh, in the neighborhood of some points. For the trail points, a more robust form of homeostasis requires uh, the judgment of derivatives up to the third order, which complicates the analysis for limb cycle systems. So we haven't considered it yet. All right, this is my last slide and thanks for listening. Uh, there's still some time, so uh, I'm happy to answer all questions and comments. Thanks, Joe Jun. Um, questions yeah. from the crowd? You can put them into chat or unmute if you prefer to just speak them. All right, I guess I'll ask one. Um, um, so, you, for all this, you assume that um, your your system is, um, I guess, at least uh, C one. Is that is that right? All your yeah under uh, the continuity assumptions. So, is it is it possible to adapt any of this to um, piecewise linear systems, for instance, where you you might um, still be able to have uh, homeostasis, but it wouldn't. Um, satisfy necessarily these um, derivative conditions? Uh, yeah, um, this is a good question. Uh, although we haven't uh, uh, considered any like, non-smooth examples, uh, I think it is um, not a problem. It's, it's not a problem because the, um, like in Dr. Wang's talk, uh, she developed the infinitesimal shape response curve, which is, um, a which, uh, which can be used to the uh, all of the smooth and non-smooth systems. So I think it's not a problem here to develop into the non-smooth examples. I see. So you you would just replace some of the functions in uh, the integral with their non-smooth counterparts, but then the, the that capital Q prime quantity would still be. Um, you could still develop similar conditions on that capital Q prime quantity. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, all right, any, any other questions for Zojun? Okay, well, um, thanks again to all our speakers today. Um, great, great talk, uh, Zojun and um, Alberto Yang Yang and, and Dan, thanks for um, all you four for, for contributing to our session. Um, 